Have you been on edge lately? Just when you think you've done everything right in your shop, like buying the right equipment, processing finishes, handling customers, mastering accounting, something else goes wrong. Take for instance Faraday Cage Rage. It kicks into high gear when you discover drips or light areas in corners and edges. Today we are combating it with our special guest, Kenny Barnes from TCI Powders. It's always great to have a powder supplier rep on the show, and today is no exception. Get ready to level up your powder coater game. Welcome to the Powder Coder podcast, where we interview influencers and talk about t- trending topics so that you can grow your powder coder biz. Today's guest is uh, a guy that I met or I've known uh, via email for a very long time. Um, he's our TCI rep. Uh, the TCI is a powder brand, and I actually got to meet him in person at Powder Coating Week this last March. And so I'm happy to have him on the show. Kenny, welcome to the show. Thank you so much. Yeah, like you said, it was great to finally meet you uh, (laughs) this winter in in, uh, Orlando. So yeah, I'm looking forward to have a conversation with you. Yeah, and I saw your badge first, you know, because we're all wearing my name is whatever. And I'm like, Kenny Barnes. I'm like, I know Kenny Barnes. And then I looked up at this gorgeous face and said hello and we hugged and everything like that. So it was, uh, you know, everybody was... um, you know, in such a festive mood. Uh, did you notice that? Like Absolutely. everybody was just so happy to, to see each other. Yeah. <laughs> get, some, get some human interaction. Yeah. Uh, the free drinks didn't, it, it helped helped a lot too. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I loved the mood that was at the show. Uh, you know, the technical show gets really technical. That's what I found out uh, about Powder Coating Week. Of course, I started with the Custom Coder Forum, which was the day before. Right. Um, and I tried to hang in there with a lot of the chemistry and formulation stuff that they were talking about uh, and like tried to make sure I had a Coke or a coffee with me. <laughs> like, keep, keep my <laughs> eyes open, you know, like. Yeah. I felt like I was back in high school again, <laughs> talking about some pretty technical stuff about chemistry and stuff, but it was still fascinating, even though I could barely understand it all. But, uh, but I hung in there. I thought I did pretty good. <laughs> yeah. It's a great show and it's, it's a great place to learn more about powder coating, no matter how long you've been in the industry. And, but yeah, I can definitely empathize with that. Sometimes it's just too much information all at once. And if you've been sitting in classes all day, sometimes you just need to break. Otherwise you're not going to retain the information, you know? Right. Yeah, that's true. And I, I tend to overdo it when I'm like, I want to see everything. Yeah. Yeah. Right. <laughs> just, take, just take good notes. Right. Right. Did you attend any of the keynotes at all? Um, I think I did. Yeah. I saw Jeff Hale. Um, Particularly the last one, which not the last one uh, with the uh, the closing one, which was the afternoon, which is the Detroit Steel I, Wheel I guy, Detroit Adam, uh, the Arkema one, the one in the morning on the last day. He was uh, he was just talking. He had some pretty interesting things to say about our industry and how we need to improve it and stuff like that. And um, was that the one about making it more sustainable? Yeah. 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 That it was, was like really that. Good. That one. Yep. That was good. Um, I didn't like a lot of the fingerprinting or finger pointing. Um, yeah. Y- y- you know, uh, and uh, that kind of bugged me. I think it was just easy for them to say that at the beginning, but just to kind of get ahead of everybody. Oh, well, it's not us powder suppliers. It's you guys, you know, <laughs> like, okay, yeah, whatever. <laughs> How about we all are in it to win it, right? Exactly. So, well, let me share my screen because I want to get into your company and, um, you know, I'm always into, uh, you know, learning about different powder coating companies and how they all, and then we'll get into the subject of why I reached out to you the other day yeah. uh, in the first place, right? Because we're going to talk about Faraday. Um, awesome. 
So this is your website, TCI. Uh, you guys are based out of the East Coast, right? Yeah, we're based out of uh, America's Georgia. Okay. So it's a couple hours south of Atlanta. Yeah. And you guys have some, I have all of your cards here and stuff like that. Um, you have some pretty interesting colors uh, that we've used. In fact, uh, one of the biggest projects we ever did, which was the screen for the Hilton Waikoloa is uh, on the Big Island, is uh, was a two-tone effect that we did. <clears throat> I probably should bring up that web, uh, that picture um, yeah, up on the web. Yeah. It was a huge project, probably one of the largest volume wise uh, that we'd ever done. Um, there were two screens I think we were doing because um, they were renovating two buildings and it actually came out very stunning. Let me um, just tell us how long have you been working for TCI and then I'll go into my file and look for for the picture of that. Okay, awesome. Yeah, I've been with TCI for eight years, uh, coming up on nine years uh, this coming January. Um, I'm a sales rep. Um, my territory is kind of all over the place. Um, I've been calling on you for what, probably eight years now. I know. Yeah. <laughs> I'm flies. Yeah. And, um, I'm just grateful to be in the industry. It's awesome that you have a podcast like this promoting the industry. Um, it's really fun being in manufacturing, um, being able yeah. to just deal with customers all over the place and working with projects that, you know, I didn't even know existed. And, Nowadays, just living life, you run into powder coating all over the place. You know, every, anytime I, somebody asks me what I do, I just kind of, I can look around the room and point at something and it's probably powder coated nowadays. So it's, it's cool that it's become uh, what it is today. Yeah. Let me share that photo too, by the way, so people can see how big this project was. I heard that they were going to do more um, of it, but I, you know, I don't know how or when or whatever you know these resorts sometimes they they're all hot and heavy and then they kind of back off yeah this screen here so it was like a darker you can see that right i'm sharing mm -hmm. my screen um it was like a darker uh it really interesting the way they overlaid it it was a very clever design um in this lighter Is that for like the I, you know, I think so, or, okay. you know, like all these resorts here in Hawaii are trying to kind of up their visual game on the outside, start kind of make more either. Themselves. Yeah. They're like making, like if they're building a new building, they'll put some kind of a, a, a concrete design, um, like a floral design or some kind of wave or whatever. And, and because the Hilton White Glow has been out, you know, out there and built for a long time now, I think they were renovating uh, the buildings and stuff like that. Um, and so this was the design that they came up with. There were two buildings. So, I mean, can you imagine? I mean, it, the way it looks, it looks seamless, but it actually had lots of different moving parts and pieces that they all kind of linked up together to make that effect. I thought it was brilliant. Um, yeah, it looks great. Yeah. Um, and in fact, uh, this bronze here, this lighter bronze color, we ended up doing, because we had a little bit of powder left over, uh, we ended up uh, doing some rims in this powder. And uh, I wonder if I have, if I can go back on my rims page. I think there's a picture of it in here. And it, I got so many, you know, Instagram likes and views, like what bronze is that? <laughs> you know, like... <laughs> And I think it's called window bronze or something. It's not even, it's, it's, it's not even like a sexy name, right. <laughs> you know, at all. Um, wait, it's down here further. Cause it was a while ago when we did that. Uh, I know Your website's I great, by the way. Oh, cool. Thank you. I worked mm -hmm. very many, many. Oh, here we go. I think this is it. Yeah. I window think, bronze. Like I, you said. It's a stunning bronze for rims. And that's what I loved about it. You know, so many of these architectural colors are, um, you know, so, so architectural looking, sure. right. You don't necessarily, uh, think of them as, uh, bronzes that you'd want to put on a car, right. Or a car rim. Um, I think that, you know, what I've noticed in the, um, Instagram and stuff is this matte bronze, 
uh, if you can find a good single stage matte bronze, yep. usually you have to do a two stage matte bronze uh, and just do a matte clear over the bronze. And then it can change the outcome of the color, the initial architectural color. But uh, this was just such a nice uh, bronze. You didn't really have to put a matte clear coat on it. So that was just the single stage powder as it was. And it's just a really nice site. I remember getting a lot of likes and going, what bronze is this? What bronze is this? You know, so. Um, we'll have to you know, start marketing it as a, a rim bronze now. I'm just, I'm, uh, I'm not saying anything. I'm just saying, <laughs> just saying something. But uh, if you can perfect a matte bronze in the rim auto industry, you could market it just and call it rim bronze or matte rim bronze and right. just sell a million a million people your powder. So awesome. just a little hint there for the marketing department. Um, Taking notes. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, but who do you really sell to mostly? I mean, tell me more about who your yeah. customer is and stuff. It's Hi, this is Ross at Molly Powder Works. I have this problem with my finish. It's peeling and cracking and there appears to be a white powdery substance underneath. What's happening? Oh yeah, that's a common problem. It's called electrolysis, and in extreme weather and climates, it can ruin the life of your finishes. What we do to fix this is we install a DuraLife fastener. Prevent the early onset of coating failure with our specially designed screw cap that fits any quarter inch hole. Give all your commercial and residential jobs the longest durability against corrosion in harsh environments. Perfect for powder coated, painted, or conversion coated finishes. To order your DuraLife sink fasteners today, go to MauiPowderWorks.com, click shop, then click DuraLife. While you're there, check out our other products. Extend the life of your finish. Let DuraLife be your protector. It's a lot of, uh, I have a lot of job shop customers, um, but there are OEMs, um, fence companies, architectural companies, um, Companies that do, um, I have a customer that does like uh, field goals and uh, makes hockey goals, soccer goals, stuff like that. Oh, cool. So yeah, I mean, it's it's all over the place. And are these um, mostly East Coast based because you are East Coast based or are they all over the country? They're all over the country. And I actually relocated to uh, Salt Lake City last August. So oh, really? Yeah, oh, nice. Yeah, I've, been, I've been working with a lot uh, more people out West nowadays. Yeah. I think there's always a opportunity, especially when you have a unique line um, to expand in a further and further into the markets and markets are ever and always evolving. Right. Yeah. Uh, I think the custom coder startup garage coder and even just the, you know, advanced custom coder is always looking for more resources. There's just never seems to be enough color selection or style selection or whatever it is that they're focusing on. They need something for it, you know? Yeah, absolutely. And and different industries are moving away from liquid and they're moving from liquid to powder. So there's the doors are always there's that open, too. Yeah. 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 That's cool. Um, and you guys send me like quite a uh, variety. I probably should grab my, one of my, hold on. Let me just grab my, it, cause it's sitting right here. My little color yeah. chart. Great. This is your stock color card. Um, and I have my Maui Powderworks sticker on there so nobody rips me off. <laughs> Bring it back. <laughs> and Stefan, yours is kind of a fold out one. It's different from um, just like a book style. Right. And stuff. This is your main color card. Um, well, all those, and, those are products that we keep in stock. Yeah. Yep. And you've got some stone effects, some hammer tones that look really nice um, and stuff like that. As there's that oil rub bronze that we used and the regular bronze uh, and stuff. You got a statuary bronze, new dark bronze, which is kind of more of a dark brown mm -hmm. bronze. There are some nice bronzes in here and your textures and stones are pretty cool looking too. Like this Luna one, uh, that'd be an interesting, like for Lanai furniture or patio furniture. Yeah, definitely. Uh, it's that stone one. Patio furniture market for sure. Yeah. 
Cool. And you're, you've got a nice selection of like grays, silvers, and, and, you know, those kinds of like this Argent, bright Argent, Stardust, silver. Those are really nice too. For, uh, for the rim, auto rim guys. Definitely. Yeah. Nice. Stardust silver is one of my favorites. Yeah. So but th- this isn't the only card that you have. I think there's another one here, but we I just have an wanted an to... deck. And then we also do have an architectural card as well. Oh, you do. Okay. Yeah. This one is usually the one I go to. So you are in the lineup over here at Maui Powder Works. Um, and it never hurts to have more selection. So, you know, if the chance happens that somebody comes in and looks for something, you know, um, you know, we can help them find it. Right. Yeah, uh, absolutely. And it never hurts to ask. So there's, there's other colors that we have manufactured, um, for certain customers where we have excess inventory or, um, that we have since made a stock product. So it's always good just to reach out to me if you ever have a project where you're looking for a specific color. Yeah. And I think, you know, you're different enough to where, like, if you're trying to find something in between two other colors or whatever, it's good to look at your catalog because you might just be in that, you know, just that next level color that they're looking for. Right. Right. Um, and stuff, but okay. So, but something does confuse me or I clear, I need clarification on, sure. and that is when I order my powder, it comes from a company called Intech. And that, cause I'm usually ordering it in smaller batches, like five, five pounds. Right. So I think it's five and 50, 50 pound or 55 pound. Those are the two sizes that you said, but if you need something like small, you have to order through Intech, right? Correct. Right. Yeah. Intech. Um, I'm also a rep for Intech. So they're a distributor for TCI. Okay. So what, what Intech does is they basically buy a 55 pound box from TCI and then they repackage it into those smaller right. quantities, the five yeah. pound boxes, the 10 pound boxes. So that's why you, when you order a smaller quantity, the order is shipped and built through Intech because it's at that point, a separate company. Yeah. If you do order a full 55 pound box, that has to go directly through TCI. So yeah. that's the, okay. the, the difference. That's, that's how it works with you guys. Yeah. Right. Um, cause, cause TCI just doesn't all, they don't, they don't sell their products in the smaller quantities. They just right. sell full boxes. Right. And if somebody wants to start an account with you, do they go contact you or do they contact Intech? What do they do? Yeah, they, they can contact me and I, I can okay. get set up with either company. Well, we'll make sure to put your contact information in the description and the uh, when they go to YouTube or, or um, online, I'll make sure to have that contact information in there so that they can start an account with you. Great. Thank um, you. Yeah. And I think I just remember filling out an application and I even, I don't even know if you still have this on your website, but you could actually add yourself to your website. Do you yeah, still so have that page? On TCI. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, yeah. True coders, or it might be a different uh, tab on the website now. Which I thought was brilliant of you because as a powder supplier, it's very rare that you know, I, I know that some of the secondary market, uh, app, you know, powder suppliers will, um, they have like platforms where they, you can create a page or something on their website sure. or whatever. But I've, you know, when I saw that opportunity, I wanted to make sure that I got on there because it creates a valuable backlink to your business. Right. So, uh, and it always helps people that are looking for applicators in that area. If they find that page, then they can kind of sort through and it's like a directory, many, many directories. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. So that's, that's awesome. And I, I thought that was really forward thinking of a powder supplier <laughs> because some of you guys are not as forward thinking <laughs> you know, for custom coders, I guess, not necessarily for the industrial generational powder coders that do line do they've been ordering the same powder from you for 15 years or whatever. Right. Okay. But you know, uh, us custom coders are the cool kids, <laughs> you know, and so Absolutely. we have to have flashy stuff. Right. Yeah. Uh, but. Um, Anyway, so let me head over to that website uh, of, uh, let me see if I can find, okay, let's go back to the rim, that beautiful rim we did. And here's the Intech page. This is the, what we came here to talk about. Uh, but here they have Intech, uh, they sell Gima guns, uh, 
they've got the booths, Mighty Hook. They got your powder on there. They do Teflon coatings and some other ovens here too. So they kind of, I, that was where I was kind of needed that clarification. Cause I'm like, well, do they own you or do they just sell your products? So you're saying they're just a distributor. Yeah, exactly. They're just a powder coating distributor and they, and the powder supplier that they distribute for is TCI. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Got it. But here's the, here's the main part of what we want to talk about today. And that is Faraday cage. And I don't know how I stumbled upon this. I think I was doing some other kind of a search and uh, I stumbled upon this very simply laid out blog post because when you generally read uh, a lot of technical blogs about powder coatings and powders and all kinds of stuff in our industry, it can get really for someone learning the industry, it can get really in the weeds very fast. And I wish it wasn't that way. I think there's definitely a need for more uh, layman term type technical blogs instead of the super high tech technical blogs, right? In our industry, there's a big gap there. Of course, at Maui Powder Works, we kind of innovated writing to the customer. Um, We were just trying to uh, write blogs that customers would want to read about our industry or, you know, what powder coating is about. Uh, so that's helped us navigate that for, our, for us, but there's a whole need of, you know, these simply, simply written, um, application type stuff to kind of just glance over it, make sure that guys are doing it right or, you know, problem solving, right? And that's what I like about it. And you have graphics, which is awesome because that can also give people an easier way to understand how they're supposed to do it. So that's really cool. And it's not a very, it's just a page uh, and it it just highlights what you want to focus on. Here's a message from today's sponsor. Do you know chemical strippers from Banco Sales reduced our prep time by up to 80%? We chose Banco B17 and have been using it now for five years. We were surprised at how effortless it removed finishes from literally anything we put into it. Removal takes minutes, not hours. Several suppliers over the years have told us they have something as good as B17, but don't believe it. There's a reason the name B17 is universally applied for those claiming to have fast strippers. Buy it by name and available only by Benko Sales. B17 is the industry benchmark by which every other stripper is compared. Accept no substitute. Get started today by going to BencoSales.com. B-E-N-C-O Sales.com. Say Ross Coat sent you for a free Benco t-shirt. Yeah, like you said, it's uh, the pictures are great because I'm a visual learner, so it helps me too uh, whenever yeah. there's, there's pictures. And yeah, I think the thought process behind it was to keep it short and simple. Like you said, not not going too many technical terms that would just fly over people's heads. So it's just yeah. a quick sheet to uh, kind of go over the Faraday cage effect. Right. And so, but I'm going to, so I downloaded this and then uploaded. I had Ross look at the, uh, this and see what's not what's missing, but how can you add to this in, in, in a sense that makes it even better. And so we, (laughs) Ross got a hold of this paper and started drawing, um, and stuff like that. And Uh, so, but let's go over some of the more technical, you know, uh, stuff of what is Faraday cage. Let's just start there. Uh, basically, um, the name was coined after a scientist from the 1800s, Michael Faraday. Um, he was doing experiments and he found that, um, electricity or I guess excess electricity, uh, would build up on the outside of an object, but not on the inside. So to prove that, he actually had an experiment where he would put a person inside of a cage and aim electricity and that would onto the, the cage and it would only build up on the outside and it wouldn't affect the person. So that coined the term the Faraday cage effect. 
Oh, interesting. Okay. Yeah. I didn't know that. That's yeah. fascinating. Yeah. Are you reading from Wikipedia right now? <laughs> I did actually have to Wikipedia that before I got on. I'm not going to lie. Yeah. <laughs> no, but it makes um, sense. Uh, you know, uh, and if you've ever sp sprayed either liquid or powder, if you've ever sprayed a flat panel piece, you'll see it firsthand, you right. know, especially if you're not doing it right. Yep. Uh, so, so now you're tied. So let's, so how are you solving this problem here with Faraday? Um, yeah. So, so first off, like you said, how, I mean, this is kind of what you've um, found to be the best for your application. Unfortunately for Faraday, um, there is no silver bullet. So what works for your application may not work for another application. And it, it can, and it's different from job to job, from part to part. Um, so everything that's on this sheet and that we discussed, um, I just kind of advise my customers to, to try out different tactics, different nozzles, um, yeah. different gun settings, and figure out what works best for them. Um, and one of the nicer things about the um, powder coating guns nowadays is you can store recipes. So there are yes. presets for the Faraday cage effects, but then there's also in addition to that, there's um, the recipe pages where you can find, you know, your Faraday recipe, save it. So then when you, if you have that specific part, you know to use preset recipe number four or whatever it is. Yeah. I mean, when you're doing this guy's parts and that guy's parts, yeah. and you know, like you're doing a run of stuff. Yeah. You don't want to have to rethink how you did it last time. Um, but I think what I like about your graphic is that it does tell you the best angle to spray. And I think that that's kind of like when you're learning powder coating or you're just painting or whatever, you're, you are, um, you know, the angle matters, right? Um, because people are so used to just hitting it straight on when they're learning um, and not thinking about angles or getting kind of creative there. And that's what I liked about this graphic uh, because it, it does tell you that you do kind of do need to spray at an angle. Yeah, basically. So what's happening um, in a fair day cage effect is like in that picture, you know, this just you're spraying a corner of, a, of an object. Um, powder coatings are electrostatically charged, right? So being electrostatically charged, they are drawn to the path of least resistance. So mm -hmm. just for that picture right there, it kind of looks like a V. The powder is going to want to ground to the sides first, not that corner. So right. you don't you kind of see there's a little detail here where it's just slightly <laughs> darker. I mean, they could have made it even more dramatic, right? Uh, because in the V here, it's very light. And then over here on the edges, it's heavier. So yeah, sorry, go ahead. No, you're fine. No, that's, that, that was a good, good point. Um, so basically, yeah. So the, the powder will kind of be rejected from this corner and then it will build up on the sides. And if you have the angle going directly into the corner, the airflow will actually be trying to shoot the powder out of that corner and it won't be able to go anywhere because you have the gun aimed directly into the corner. So that will just continue to have the film build up around the corner and not in it. So that's where yeah. we suggest having what they call an obtuse angle. So I kind of tell my customers anywhere around like 30 to 45 degrees. If you, aim, yeah. if you aim your gun that way, um, it kind of just helps the cloud build into the corner rather than just trying to jam it in there. Um, and then, yeah, look, um, on your little diagram there, diagram there, it looks like that, um, what you guys have found that a flat jet nozzle works best. So that's great. Cause, um, versus a typical cone tip, um, the flat jet nozzle decreases the powder cloud and makes it more of like a straight line. So that's a great tip to get the powder directly into the corner. Um, whereas the cone tip kind of makes a bigger cloud. Um, so again, both, both could work. Um, it's just kind of up to the customers to do, do their own testing and figure out which. Works yeah. And I think application, I'm not sure if, you know, I did, I, when Ross opened up the Wagner package from wherever we bought it from was, you know, I'm not sure if this tip comes with a gun or not, mm -hmm. or if that's a special order tip. Um, but, um, I'd imagine that the average gun just comes with a round, a round conical tip this might be you know if and what we're describing here in case you're listening is that it's got a slit in it 
versus just a round hole. And you can, um, you know, put that tip on and it, it, it'll have a pattern that sprays linearly up and down, or it'll go, if you turn the gun or you turn the tip, it'll spray uh, flat or uh, horizontally, uh, depending on what you're doing. He, all Ross is describing here on this diagram is that he's using the vertical slit, like Kenny just said, and it's going in there. But there are a few other steps that Ross added to this. Uh, of course, it includes hot flocking because he is the hot flocker in the Pacific. <laughs> 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 the best hot flocker in the Pacific. Um, and um, he thinks that heating up that metal actually helps lay that powder or you know, I mean, you've already got this electrostatic thing happening, but the hot flocking, the heat actually kind of adds to the, uh, I don't know if you want to call it a gravity effect. It's not really gravity, but it, it, it helps the powder stick and add yeah. in there. Absolutely. So you see what you're doing, really. It's really about seeing what you're doing. Um, I, we can kind of debate to hot flock or not. Um, we did a couple of videos on, you know, a couple of podcasts way early on in the, you know, when we started podcasting, I think it's episode, uh, th uh, three or two and episode 18 all on hot flocking. But, um, but, you know, so if you're not hot flocking, there's still other things that you can do here to decrease the flow rate, you know, cause you don't want a big fat cloud because it's just going to add to that. It's just going to, you're going to be fighting yourself on that Faraday effect, effect. And what you're trying to do is just minimize it. Yeah, absolutely. If you have too much flow or too much powder delivery, you can just be, the powder can essentially be bouncing off of those, those corners. So then you're just wasting powder. And it's also yeah. creating more of a charged corner, which is going to have you run into back ionization and all kinds of other problems. Yeah. Um, That's the another, other another tip I thought of was, um, it if you know that you have Faraday cage areas on a part, you're going to want to try and powder coat those first rather than doing the flat parts. Cause like I said before, um, powder is going to want to go to the path of least resistance. Yes. So by doing the Faraday cages, Faraday cage, um, areas first, um, then you can kind of go to the flat parts. It'll just make your life a whole lot easier. That's a good, that's a very good point. Um, and also to reduce the, uh, PSI and the KV. So on this, uh, drawing, you know, on the, on the blog post, it says reduce the voltage to 40 to 60 KV. Right. Ross's method is 50 PSI and 50 KV, 25 milli, um, uh, yeah. yeah. Awesome. Um, yeah, that's, that's so that's kind of like his preset, I guess, if you want to call it that he just does it, he doesn't have all the presets set up, but he just dials it in because he knows. And I should have probably taken a picture because right when this happened, we got a, a last minute job in where it was like the shelving units, but they were like, you know, the panel itself was probably about two feet wide. And then it had just a two to three inch lip on the edge. So there were lots of angles on this. Um, plus you've got weld, weld marks and stuff in there where they join together. And it had like a little hook where it kind of dove in and hooked into some kind of a panel system of some sort to, I don't know, put a drink on or something. I don't know whatever they were doing with it. And it was actually some really... Uh, so it's basically two sided where you had two different angles on, you know, one on each side that, you know, it's complicated, right. On top of having to hang it just right and everything like that, you yeah. know, um, and it was perfect. I mean, he just did it one time and it was just, you know, uh, you know, he did a primer coat, uh, cause it's going outdoors, but, um, and so they also saying the next tip is that you want to keep a distance of about eight to 10 inches uh, from the part. Yeah, absolutely. That's just kind of a baseline. Um, so, you know, there's certain parts that are going to have huge recessed areas and you need to be sticking your arm all the way in there. So you may need to get the gun a little bit closer than the eight to 10 inches, but just kind of as a benchmark, um, that's what we recommend. Yeah, I think that's a, 
you know, if you haven't learned that by now, um, you know, it's something you need. It's one of the first things you need to learn uh, in terms of, you know, getting learning different parts and what you need for rims versus architectural jobs and and the and then and everything in between. Um, okay, we caught, covered the slotted tip, spray, uh, spray the slot in line with the corner. And so he's got it all dialed in there. Um, and then uh, approach recess at an obtuse angle. We covered that. So that was it, right? Are we done? That was it. We've we've solved all the Faraday cage <laughs> problems of the world now, thanks to this podcast. <laughs> the only other thing I'll say is um, it kind of goes stays true to, to any powder coating problem is you want to check your ground. Um, so oh, if- yeah. It's, it's a good place to start if you want to make sure that your, your hooks and your racks are, are clean, especially um, when you run into issues. Um, it'll just make your life a lot harder. Yeah, um, I actually had John Cole, uh, I think it was episode 34 on Parker Ionics. He, the yeah. guy is just a master at <laughs> that. It, it, it's one of the best podcasts I think we've ever produced uh, nothing on my part because I didn't know much about grounding. So I just kind of let him talk and he had these beautiful slides and he's just, you know, one of those uh, guys that has just been in the business for so long and just master. Right. You know? Yeah. You're not going to be able to to stump him with the question. (laughs) Yeah. Right. Exactly. Right. Um, so I think some of the other ones they wanted to just to finish up this, uh, this blog post was, uh, reduce, you know, make sure your air turbulence is reduced, allow deeper penetrate to allow for deeper penetration into the corner, minimize early back ionization. That's again, related to, uh, grounding and stuff like that and utilize more lines of force. What is that? What do they mean by that? More lines of force. Um, utilizes more lines of force. I don't know. I don't know what that means. Yeah, I think it can go back to uh, what, you, what you opened with is sometimes I think the people that, that make these are, <laughs> are engineers or scientists Jargon. and yeah, so they're, they're speaking a different language. Yeah. So, well, uh, hopefully you can get the word out and people can, you know, like Intech or TCI or anybody else can start writing a little bit more simply. I think that's going to help the custom coder market a lot. You're absolutely um, right. You know, it, it's the forums are gone and that's where you're getting that kind of non-jargon, uh, help. Uh, you know, there are some forums still out there, but it's not as readily available. And even, I think part of the problem is just like, even in the groups today, it's just so much attitude and ego going on and somebody trying to prove a point or, or whatever, rather than just disseminate the information you know, straightforwardly, right? You right. know, it's just always somebody's going to get butt hurt over what they say or disagree, and then it just becomes this big giant argument um, and stuff. And that that's what we're hoping to do at the podcast is just try to talk to the experts and you know see what we can do about just you know getting more information out and stuff. Yeah, no, it's great. I I, I love what you guys are doing, and I think it's it's huge for the industry and more and more people are listening to podcasts nowadays. So it's, it's yeah. great. What are you guys doing in the future at TCI? Are you going to any, are you going to fab tech? Are you going to yeah, any I'll other be, conferences? I'll be yep. I'll yeah. be at fab tech. Um, so we're a member of PCI. So I'll be, I attend all the PCI events. So I, I went to the annual meeting this summer. Um, I go to fab tech in the fall and then powder coating week will be right around the corner. After it that. is. It's in February. We're already planning it. And, uh, hopefully we can pull it off again. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I guess they added me to the, I keep getting added to these committees that I'm like, oh, well, let's just add Kim in there. She'll show up. <laughs> I'm yeah, like, oh, okay, I'm going to, to this one. There's another one, I think next Tuesday or something. I'm like, <laughs> I don't even know what that one's about, <laughs> but, um, it's been great talking to you and, um, How's, uh, how's this past year been for you for business? Oh yeah, that's right. Um, you know, pretty good. Uh, we, uh, just got like a $20,000 job, like last night at 10 o'clock on the email. Oh, we're dropping this stuff off. See you tomorrow. tomorrow I'll give you my morning, credit card. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, 
okay, I got to do a podcast. I got to, <laughs> you know, Ross is fixing up his truck right now. I'm like, okay. Um, so yeah, I think it's going to end strong. We're ahead uh, uh, volume wise or like dollar wise, we're ahead by about 22% from last year, which is always good to know and good to hear. I think definitely um, the inflation is putting some drag on the profitability though. Um, So that's concerning. And, you know, obviously you can't control that at all. Hey, Powder Coating Nation, Kim Scott here. It's time to grow your business with us. The Powder Coating Near Me directory can get your powder coating shop the real exposure it needs to succeed when you list your job shop today. Join a list of top custom coders who've listed their credentials to be discovered by the customers who are searching for powder coating every day. Head over to powdercoatingnearme.com, click add a coating shop and start creating your very own page for free. Yes, free. You can add your logo, name, address, phone number, map listing, social media links, photos, video, and more. When you submit your listing, we'll get notified and approve you right away. Now you can add all the categories you specialize in, even add your own tags. Get the SEO and valuable backlinks your company needs for authority and getting ranked. You can even use the link you create and share it to your favorite social media profiles to build legitimacy as a custom coder. What are you waiting for? Become part of the largest consumer search directory in powder coating in the world. All for free. Find and click the link in this podcast or go to powdercoatingnearme.com to get started growing your brand today. Uh, yeah, it's, it's tough. I think there's still some supply chain stuff going on with powders and chemicals and stuff. Absolutely. How much have have you guys charged your, have you guys, I know you've increased your prices. I remember getting an email a while back, but it didn't seem to be as extreme as, or as frequent as like Axel Nobel or some of the other powder suppliers that were just sending out emails left and right. Oh, another 20%, another 40%, another, you know, so um, yeah, I think we've, I think we've increased our prices about three times. Um, we've actually only done one price increase since March of 2020. What, what TCIs chose to do yeah. is instead of increasing the price, there's a surcharge. So it's, there's your price per pound of 399. And then there's a separate line item. That's a surcharge. Um, mm-hmm. the thought process behind that is, when things kind of stabilize, whenever that yeah. happens is, you know, there's, we're yet to see that, but when that happens, they want to take away the surcharge. So right. it's, it's a lot easier for our, you know, accounting system to do that rather than to go through a price reduction. So that's the, uh, the thought process behind a surcharge rather than. A yeah. Surcharge. And I think, um, you haven't had any, I think that's a great idea. I, I, I have seen that from some other companies as well. I think it's great. You haven't had any shortages, have you yet? Or like, have you run out of something? Because I heard like Cardinal ran out of BKOA, which is, seems impossible to the world. But yeah, uh, yeah. Um, so we have we've ran out of stock of products that were supposed to be kept in stock, but we have never. I don't believe that we ever were ever in a situation where we were completely out of the raw material. It, it was just we ran out of stock and then it's, you know, in our production queue. So oh, that's we, 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 they've done a really good job of uh, stocking up on the certain raw materials that we know that are going to be in high demand. So it's, it's challenging though. I mean, every, it seems like every other week there's a different, like you said, chemical or additive or resin that's just hard to find. So it's, it's a fluid situation. Yeah. And then, you know, you're, it's just like going and getting toilet paper at Costco when there's a hurricane or some kind of, you know, like something, you know, you're hoarding, you know, you can't help but buy more of what you need because you just don't know. Right. Yeah, Um, definitely. You know, and it's, it, I know that's, you kind of have to be pragmatic about it, but, uh, so, but how, how has TCI been? I mean, have you had a good year or how's it going for you guys in the powder industry? And where do you see powder, powder industry, you know, continuing on 
you know, and manufacturing for that matter. I mean, you're on the East Coast. I mean, if something's going to slow down, it's going to start there, maybe even in Europe sure. first, right? And it's scary what they're saying, you know, out of Germany right now too. So what's your take on all of that? Yeah, I mean, we're, ha- we're having a great year. Um, we're up in volume and we're up in sales as well. So it's it's been a great year. Um, still another quarter left. So looking yeah. forward to closing out strong. You're um, not too tied to Europe, are you? No, no, it's more Asia. So I okay. think that's a lot of the powder coating industry. Um, a lot of the the raw materials do come out of Asia. So it's it's just challenging. I mean, they're I think China still has the zero COVID policy. So it's just, they'll, they'll what shut, are they doing they'll, there? They'll shut down a whole shift. And then that just puts a wrench in the whole supply chain. I, I, the whole thing kind of baffles me um, because they're, they're hurting their people either way, whether they get COVID or not, like locking them up in cage, in the caging in them in their own homes. I mean, we, you know, it's beyond ridiculous at this point, but like, why, what do you think their thinking is with that? I just don't understand it at all. Yeah. I, I don't know. Killing them softly. Yeah. <laughs> I, <don't know. laughs> I guess they just, they know the demand is so high that we're not, we can't go anywhere else. Right. So the, all the manufacturers of powder are still going to be placing those orders with them or, and it's just right all we can do is take it. There's not really anywhere else we can go. Maybe they're just trying to buffer themselves from a really severe recession in China. Because remember, back in the Great Recession, they never really felt like what we felt. They just kept on trucking like it didn't matter. And then now they're in their housing crisis because of what they did. That's the outcome of what they did out of the Great Recession. They, They had one quarter where things dipped might might have dipped like a tenth of a percent or something like unheard of right you know but uh yeah i mean i think some of that's coming home to roost for them but they do do 36 percent of the world's powder coating you know yeah i believe they're the biggest market huge. they are the biggest yeah. market yeah they are so maybe yeah you're right because they have 30 percent of the market they think well people aren't going to go anywhere else where the 30 percent you know where the th- a third of the whole world right right but um i don't know not that you can believe anything coming out of china but no not at all (laughs) um so yeah to answer your question as far as where i see powder coating go um i I think we're already seeing it more um lower cure coating so there's other you know new markets like wood and and mdf that are already there's companies out there that make more coatings to those markets than TCI, but I, I can see us getting more into those markets. I know that our, our lab is working on coatings that'll work in those markets. And then I was just reading an article that um, they're kind of seeing UV curable coatings becoming more popular, which is, you know, with everybody in the world trying to be more sustainable, I could definitely see the US powder manufacturers getting into more UV curable coatings. Yeah, I think there's, um at least a lot of these global companies that were, um, you know, uh, in China are now rethinking China, uh, and coming back to the U S um, maybe not necessarily, you know, some of them are manufacturers, others are more tech based or whatever, but, um, I think it's, I mean, I don't want to say I'm making a prediction here, but I think it is a positive that this reshoring thing or, revising or and thinking less global more central uh north american based or america based is kind of like we're the old reliable that everybody walked away from when china was like oh but china is so cheap and yeah. you're like oh now you're seeing the you know some of the pitfalls of that um but i i, I feel positive about our business um good right now and i feel positive about um the industry in general um you know yeah, so do I. and yeah it's promising like you said the reshoring the jobs coming back to the states is great i mean they they should have never left and it's a shame that they they did go offshore but it's good to it's good to see some of them come back yeah i think europe is concerning because of the gas crisis and stuff we're just starting to see that who knows by the time this is published it'll have you know changed and inverted and 
and, and everything by the time we get this published, but um, who knows, but I think there's going to be a lot uh, happening this fall, no matter what, lots of drama. Um, and we just need to kind of take it as it comes, right? Most of the powder coaters that I talked to that I interviewed and um, they just seem to keep getting busier and busier, you know, and uh, we were kind of talking about like, you know, if things were to either, you know, if things were to slow down uh, in America, you know, will the powder coaters still be busy? And I think that, I think the answer is yes. I think some of them are going to get even bigger and busier because the smaller line companies maybe won't be able to handle that volume and then it'll come down to the intermediate coders, right? Or custom coders. Right. I'm just thinking custom coders, not, you know, the big right. guys, but um, I think the demand there would be uh, those guys getting bigger. If you're small like us, um, mom and pop, you could be in for some tough because they, you know, we're trying to think our way through. Yeah, we're busy and we're making more money than we did last year. But then that inflation is really kind of cutting into the profitability. So, you know, if you're suffering with high debt or you are not keeping up with your bills or whatever, or it's you've got this inconsistent cash flow, I think that will um, unfortunately be really bad for these guys that are either just getting started or in kind of like this trying to ramp up more business, but then can't get it kind of thing. So um, it'll be interesting to see how it's going to move and shake, I think. <clears throat> in the Yeah, in the absolutely. Event. And the price of everything is, is so fluid. There's just, you know, yeah. any, anytime. I know you can. guys are doing the best that you can. You really are. You know. Yeah, it's it's a challenge um, just because everything's so fluid. So one of the good things about TCI, and I'm, I know the other manufacturers do it, is they try to absorb it as much as possible. And then once it gets, you know, past the breaking point, we try to give our customers, you know, as much um, a notice as possible, you know, up to a month or at least a few weeks, just because, you know, if you, I feel for you guys, if you get a, you get a job, you price it out, they agree to the price and then your supplier hits you with a price increase, like, yeah, that's, that's hard. We, um, <clears throat> we just increased our prices by 5% and we increased our powder price by $5. So, um, I just, I'm doing it now because not only because I know inflation is here, uh, but I don't want to be behind the curve. And in the past, when we were still, you know, when we were younger, <laughs> you know, we, uh, you know, we, we, we didn't stay up on our prices when we could have charged more um, and stuff like that. So I think, for me, I'd rather be more proactive at this point rather than save uh -huh. face for a customer, right? You know, because uh, we're trying to think smarter here and not, you know, rather than just faster or this or the cheaper or whatever, you know, but there's a lot that we've done in the background to get us to where we're at brand wise. And so that I feel more confident being able to charge that kind of the kind of pricing that we are. Hey guys, you know, we never thought the Powder Coder podcast would take off as well as it has. The level of engagement and bringing custom coders together has been wonderful and worth every late night edit and weekend recording. Whether it's product features, smart business strategies, or custom coder interviews, we are encouraged to continue to bring great content. That's why we're going to show you how you can help us just a little bit more by sponsoring the show for as little as a dollar, five, or ten dollars per month. Just go to Roscoe.com page and look for the Become a Patreon button in the upper right hand corner of the page. Once you're there, you can scroll to learn more about our goals and mission, grow our community by bringing you new episodes and news each week. With every sponsor level, you get something for yourself too to guarantee your success as a powder coat. We are so thankful for you and enjoying the content we bring you each week. 
and help you show your support by becoming a sponsor. And level up your powder coder game. You know, and I'd rather take the one twenty thousand dollar job than like, you know, ten or twenty. <laughs> you know. Yeah, no, I agree. <laughs> yeah. So. Um, yeah, it's challenging. It's it's these past couple of years have been have been crazy. I mean, it was it's just one thing after the other. So it's yeah, you got to do what you got to do to survive. Got to whip back in the other direction. So I, th- I, there may still be some hard times ahead, but you know, I think eventually we'll come out of this, but like, like we were just talking about, I mean, the powder coating industry is growing. So, you know, I think for TCI or most of the industry after that April, May of 2020, it just came roaring back and it's kind of hasn't turned back since. So that's a good sign. Yeah. I, in the end, I mean, when you weigh it all out, I think it's going to be positive for North America in general. So it's awesome. Absolutely. Awesome. So good to have you on the show, Kenny. Finally. Yeah, it was great talking to you. <laughs> Had a fun time. And you're welcome back <laughs> anytime. Oh, absolutely. I'd love to come back. And and like I said before, the, the all the Faraday cage tips, um, it's I just stress any custom any custom coder to to play with those and figure out what works best for them. And and if you can store that recipe on the gun or you know, in a notebook, whatever, whatever helps you out. Yeah. And I think, you know, just to kind of add to that point, it's like, I think a lot of, a lot of us just wait until the, the job comes in and then we're like, oh shit, what do we, how do we do this? Right. How do we, how do we powder coat this? And you, maybe you're right. You, maybe you're onto something It's like, go and get some, you know, uh, junky parts or whatever that have this kind of problem, uh, and uh to to them right and then practice right maybe maybe it just takes some practice and just taking that time to really think things through while you're doing it so that it makes sense to you um because you can read a blog post all you want but until you're actually putting it you know physically in your hand and you're doing it i mean it just the, the light sometimes doesn't click on until you do you know and that i think that's how ross has arrived at where he's at is like he actually stopped to slow down and just really think through how am I going to do this? Right. You know, and then feel it, right. You know, connect the brain to the body, to the hand, to the gun, to the, you know, and have it all make sense. And I think some of us are so frantic, you know, doing it, it's just like, they're just doing it to be doing it, to get onto the next job. And that's sometimes you can't do that because it's really an industrial art. No, absolutely. And and some jobs you may have been able to just kind of gloss over it and the Faraday cage wasn't really an issue. And then you come up with something with a more exaggerated angle and now you're kind of screwed. So yeah, I think you, yeah. you hit the nail on the head with, with being proactive and kind of testing out on scrap parts. Yeah. Awesome. Well, have a beautiful day, everyone. Thanks for liking, subscribing, following the podcast. Uh, rosscoat.com uh youtube channel maui powder works maybe all of that maybe someday we'll just have one giant website and it'll be just beautiful uh i'm kind of getting over the pre-programmed one from podbean but uh you know we'll get there somewhere somehow some way <laughs> keep growing all right everybody have a great day aloha